Samuel chapter number 7. 1 Samuel chapter 7. If you're visiting with us, you didn't bring a Bible. We have uh, black Bibles in the pews. This has some of our folks uh, here in the middle. That, uh, this has some of our folks here in the middle. Look under there for some Bibles in case some of our visitors can make you help if you need to. Uh, that would be a blessing. Make sure everybody sees the Word of God. Amen. And the Word of God is the only thing that changes a person's life. Right. That's it. Just the Word of God. Lots of churches out there, but not a lot of Bible preaching churches. And so I thank God that we uh, we get to experience the Word of God, we get to read the Word of God, we get to live in the Word of God, and the Word of God speaks to us. And, and that's the difference between uh, uh, living a Christian life the way God designed it and living a Christian life the way you designed it. And I want to live what God designs. And, and so it's through the Word of God, the preaching of the Word of God that helps us. First Samuel chapter number 7. It's going to read uh, three verses here. And then we'll, uh, we'll have a, I'll pray, we'll have a song, and we'll get right into the Word. If you're able to stand, please stand for the reading of the Word. Uh, and we're, we're, we just do that in reverence to the Lord. Uh, we'll stand for Him. Amen. And so that's a good thing. First Samuel chapter number 7. And we're going to begin reading in verse number 15. And the Bible says, And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. And he went from year to year in circuit to Bethel, and Gilgal and Mitzvi and judged Israel in all those places. And his return was to Ramah, for there was a house, his house, and there he judged Israel, and there he built an altar unto the Lord. I'm going to pray. We have the song. I'll give you an introduction. Get right into the message. I'll, I'll give the title in just a second. Father, we love you. And Lord, I'm thankful for the Word of God. I'm thankful for this prophet Samuel and the stands he took and the miracle that transpired in his life to become a man of God and the, how he never folded up, how he, he stuck with the stuff, Lord. He gives us a great example here in the Word of God tonight. Father, help us to be Samuels. Help us to be strong. Help our graduates to want to stand for the Lord all the days of their life and May uh, something great happen and continue to happen in all their lives and all our lives alike. Father, we love you tonight, Lord. We need you to bless the preaching and teaching of your word. We ask you to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing.
And man, that's what uh, that's what our churches need. That's what our families need for somebody to go get God. Yeah. Uh, my mom and dad. I've texted my dad this morning and told him how proud to be, how proud to have him as a father as I am because of the hard work that he put on in our house and and led and and now I'm even more proud because about nine years ago my mom and dad got the Lord and God blew in on that and and they're striving to be godly striving to live for the Lord and, and that's great but I, I, I say this I'm not lifting me up I was just the first one in my family to get saved but it's almost like we went and got God and brought him home and uh, and somebody needs to go get God in our families all of us have family members that and different things in our life. And someone's got to go get them. Amen. And, and so I hope that you will uh, think about that. Will you be the one? Will you be the one that's going to get him? You got me, Brother Paul? We look at this, this passage of Scripture. And, and listen, Samuel, if you don't know about Samuel, man, Samuel was a, a man of God. I mean, he started young. His mama's name was Hannah. Hannah was barren, could not have any children, and she begged God to, to give her a child. She fasted, and she prayed, and she mourned, and wept, and, and she made a deal with the Lord to, to give him to God all the days of his life, and, 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 and pursued after God, and, and, and found God, and God did a miracle and gave her Samuel. And Samuel became a man of God when he was in the temple with Eli. God came to him and spoke to him. Maybe it's this right here, Brother Paul. God came to him and spoke to him. And Eli, he, when he gets out of his bed, he hears God talking and doesn't know what it is. And he goes into Eli and says, here am I. And Eli says, I didn't, I didn't say nothing to you, Samuel. Samuel goes back to his bed and, and God speaks to him again. He comes in there and says, here am I. And Samuel says, or Eli says, Samuel, I think... I think God's talking to you. God's speaking to you. And he felt he saw God coming to, to Samuel and he said, Go back to your bed and, and when God speaks to you, you listen to him. You you let him use you. And God got on Samuel very early in life. And and Samuel was a faithful prophet of God and did many, many things for the Lord and the Lord's people and, and was a leader that never buckled. And as we come to 1 Samuel chapter number 7 and verse number 15, the Bible says that Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. It was a time of judges that would, would help Israel and they would lead Israel, the people of God, and they would, they would tell them which way to go and how to live their lives and, and, and how what was required of God. And, and he was a, a prophet and he did many things. But he did that all the days of his life. Now I want you to look in verse 16. It says that he went from year to year in circuit. He went to Bethel, he went to Gilgal and Mitzvah, and judged Israel in all those places. And, and, and then it says, and as his return was to Ramah, for there was his house. Now, I want you to understand what, what, what that Bible is saying there. And, and it said this, that, that well, Samuel went to different places. The Bible says in circuit. So what it means is, and I don't know how the map exactly looks and could have done that for you tonight, but he, he starts off and he goes over to Bethel, and then he, he goes up to Gilgal and Mitzvi, or Mitzvia, and then he comes back to Ramah. And the Bible says in circuit. And so what that's telling us is that Samuel would go from place to place in a circle. And each place he would go and he would minister to those folks. He would preach the word of God to those folks. He would tell them, thus saith the Lord. And folks would follow God because of Samuel or they would not follow God because of Samuel. You see, the Bible uh, will draw you closer or the Bible will push you away. I tell people all the time, we have a church where you either get in or you'll get out. You won't stay lukewarm very long in here. And if you get there, God will get you and, and start speaking to you because we're going to preach and teach what the Word of God says. Amen. And so Samuel is going from place to place and he is judging Israel and he is helping Israel and he is doing the man of God duties in a circle. And then he goes home and there he judged Israel and every year, year after year after year, he'd go to Gilgal, and he'd go up, or, or, or yeah, he'd go to, uh, uh, let me mess that up. 
He go to Bethel, then to Gilgal, then Mitzpah, and then Ramah. Every year. And he never missed. And he would do that. And he would do that again. He would do it again. And so as we think about this circuit, I want you to think about this tonight. And especially the graduates and, and everyone in here. The Bible preaches to everybody. It doesn't matter what we preach on, what topic, or who we say we're talking to. The Lord gets in this thing and he moves into that book. And, and the, book, the Holy Spirit starts uh, uh, making himself known to us. And in our hearts he starts speaking to us. But Samuel was faithful to a circuit. A circle. And I'll say this tonight. That God has given every one of us a circle in our life. A circle of people that we are to continue to be faithful to the Lord in front of and we are continuing to talk to these people and continuing to uh, uh, pray for these people. God's given us all a circle. And tonight I want to talk to you about your circle. But I really want to talk to you about Samuel's circle. And show you what Samuel did to the people that God let him influence year after year after year. If I had a circle, all of you would be in my circle. If I had a circle, my neighbors are in my circle. If I had a circle, my family's inside my circle. If I had a circle, the teenagers God allows me to preach to summers in the summertime, they're in my circle. If I have a circle, it's people that I meet at the store, cashiers and different folks, and family members that aren't saved. And so we all have a circle of influence. And it's very important that we understand how Samuel did it and what he did. And, and, and it's important that we understand that God's given us all a circle of influence. And what we do with it is our own. We'll stand before God alone and, and God will say, you didn't do anything for it. They, a lot of them went to hell. A lot of them never grew in the Lord, and not a lot of them, uh, you didn't even try to talk to them. You played basketball with your circle of influence. You, you just went and bought groceries from people in your circle of influence. You just uh, chopped it up with talk that meant nothing in your circle of influence. Your, your family never heard about God in your circle of influence. They never knew about God in your circle of influence. And I don't want to be that. Samuel wasn't that. I may not be much, but I want to be a man of God, that, uh, a, a Christian, that does right by my circle. And, and, and Samuel did. Number one, I want you to see in verse number 15, it says that Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. Samuel accepted his responsibility of his circle. It says that Samuel did it. And Samuel judged. He accepted the responsibility. And, and he, he, was, he was there to do it, and, and he did do it, and he, he made sure that he talked to people about what the Lord said. When they saw Samuel coming to these towns, you know what they thought? Uh-oh, here comes the man of God. And Samuel was a feared man of God Amen. because he told the truth and because he executed God's judgments. And he was not afraid to talk to anybody. And I'm not saying that you, that you should be feared, but I am saying that people should know when you come that there is somebody that's accepted the responsibility of being a Christian in all senses of the word. Not a saved person. There's a lot of people that are saved that ain't nowhere near being Christians. That, that do not live a life that reflects anything about God. And I'm not so sure they're saved. Because you get something as big as God in you, something happens, and Samuel had God. And he, was, he accepted that responsibility. He judged them, and, and he didn't quit. He didn't say, no, I can't do it. And listen, we've got to accept some responsibility for this deal. God's put us into the New Testament Baptist Church, which is a great calling from God to be a member of the church. To be a member of the holy, set-apart uh, vessel that God would use to reach the world. And we're about that. To be a son of God where God could, could speak to me, could correct me. And, I mean, I'm, I'm getting corrected all the time by God. And I thank God for that. I mean, seven years into this thing, I don't have one person on the face of this earth that tells me what to do. But I've got a God Amen. that at this point in my life, that I look at him and say, man, I don't want to displease him. 
And, I, and, and I'm just telling you what I'm doing today. Tomorrow's a new day. And, and by the grace of God, I'll be there doing it again. But what about you? I mean, have you accepted the responsibility or are you still just doing your own thing with your own life? I mean, Samuel could have said, you know, I'm just going to do my own thing. I mean, I know I made these vows to God. I know I told God I'd live for Him. I know I told God that I would do right for Him. I know I told God that I would lead for Him. I know I told God that I'd be faithful to Him. But you know what? I'm just going to keep doing my own life. And, and, and I know uh, the preacher preaches on this. And I know the Bible says this. And I know that God wants me to do this. But you know what? I'll take some of this here and I'm going to leave some of this here. You understand, partial disobedience is all disobedience. I mean, partial obedience is disobedience. So I meant to say. And man, have you accepted the responsibility? Samuel said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to judge him. Year after year. Number two, he was consistent in his circle. He was consistent. He was steadfast. Every year, when it, when it came to Bethel, they knew the man of God was coming. Every year he'd show up. They knew he was coming. And that he was going to tell them, thus saith the Lord. Every year, they knew in Gilgal that, that Samuel the prophet was going to show up. Every year in Mitzvah, they knew that Samuel was going to show up. Every year in Rama, they knew he was going to show up. Now listen to me. I know that sometimes we have courage to stand for the Lord, and others we don't. But in your circle of influence, do they know that when you show up, you're going to be the same Christian you were here as you are there? Are they going to have you to say, hey, you know, I, I really don't agree with that. I'm sorry. I was talking to someone today, and they were telling me some things that just absolutely are not true in the Bible, and we're getting. And I was just gonna let it go. It's a friend and family member of some church, and I thought I'm gonna let it go. But then he said, "Do you agree?" And I said, "No, sir. No, sir. I don't agree with that because that's not what the Bible teaches." I want to be consistent. And I said it very nicely and, and everything's fine, but I'm just telling you, when you show up in your circle, your neighbors, do they see one day carrying a Bible into the house and the next day cussing outside and throwing around and carrying on? And are you consistent? They knew Samuel was coming. They knew there wasn't no plan in Samuel. Now, I love to have fun. I love my life, and I love you, and, and I thank God for the circle of influence God has given me, and I don't understand it all and know why God would be so good to trust me with so much. But I want to be steadfast in my circle. I want to be consistent in it. I want people to say, you know, well, Burton is just, he loves the Lord, and he's sticking with it. And he may have his quirks, but I'm consistent with those quirks. I, I may have some things that may be over the top a little bit in certain areas, but my, 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 what I want and what I'm thinking about is it's for the Lord. I'm thinking it's right. Hey, are you steadfast? I mean, do, are you the same person here as the same person out there? I, I, I'm just asking you. Your circle has to see something. Year after year, year after year, year after year, he was consistent. And I'm going to tell you, graduates, and everybody in here, the world don't need to see another worldly person. The world don't need to see a half-baked Christian. Your family see half-baked Christianity, they'll go half-baked to hell. They need to see someone who takes a stand. Someone who is consistent with the Word of God's teachings. Not someone that says, this is okay, but this ain't, but I'm not going to do this right now. Thus saith the Lord, I'm in. I'm all, folks, I am all in for what God says we're going to do in that Bible. Every bit of it. So, Bob Burton, I, you know, I have a problem. You do this, and the Bible said, well, be glad to tell me. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I love to know if I'm not consistent with the Word of God, and I want to be. And when I fall out, I get back up. And so we better make sure we're consistent, man, because God chose us like He chose Samuel to have a circuit a circle of friends, a circle of family, a circle of influence in Philadelphia. And, you know, your jobs. 
They don't need to see somebody on fire one week and the next week you've just thrown all your standards and all your convictions and all your things out the door and you come back in acting like them. And that's not going to help nobody. And that doesn't help God and that doesn't make God happy. He wants a circle of influence that's going to, a person that's going to be consistent in it. Number three, Samuel walked and worshipped God. Look what it says in verse number 17. And as his return was to Ramah, for there was his house. And he judged Israel, and there built an altar unto the Lord. And Samuel would go home. Now listen to me. We can look real good in our circle of influence. I can come to church, put the tie on, put the suit on, come in and say, Hi, how are you? And, and talk to you with this great voice and, and, and just say, you know, the Lord's good and hallelujah. And I think God's going to just treat us real well this week. It's going to be awesome. But who am I when I go home? When Samuel went home, he worshipped the Lord there. He wasn't just the prophet out at Bethel. He wasn't just the prophet in Gilgal. He wasn't just the prophet in Mitzvah. He was the prophet of God and walked with God and worshipped God at home. Now, some of y'all are starting to look a little sideways on this one, but I'm just telling you. God sees that, and He gave us a circle influence in the home is very important. I mean, it's not most important. Who you are at home determines who you are. And he built an altar and he worshipped there. And in the, in the Old Testament, they would build these altars. They'd worship the altar, but they would also sacrifice at the altar. Now, when's the last time you sacrificed for the Lord? Made a sacrifice to God. Either, either gave something up that you needed for the Lord or thought you needed or, or even just killed some things in your life that shouldn't be there. Had a sacrifice to God. I told those teenagers the other day, when's the last time you surrendered your life? And then I know the, all the, all the, the ameners and the, the, all the counselors and pastors all, amen. And I said, amen, nothing. When's the last time you pastors and youth pastors surrendered your life? And we got to constantly make sacrifices. And, and, and see, uh, he, uh, Samuel went from place to place. And, and who I am here is great. But who am I at home? And when he got home, he built an altar. He worshipped the Lord at home. He sacrificed at home. He walked with God at home. He wanted to meet God. He had a real love for God. And it wasn't just when he was out in front of people judging. See, that's a lot of Christianity today. What we are in public is a lot different than what we are when we get home. Everybody now, kids, husbands, wives, God's not for that junk. God calls that hypocrite or a hypocrisy. That's play acting. The word hypocrite in the Bible means a play actor, someone who pretends like they are something they're not. And, and I've said this before, we are who we think we are, we are who people think we are, and we are who God knows we are. And, and who are you today? He didn't want to serve just on the outside around people. He went home and built an altar. And you know what people saw when, when Samuel got home? See, the altar wasn't inside the house. The altar was a, a bunch of, probably a bunch of big rocks that he had set up. And when they went by Samuel's house, they said, there's the man of God's altar. I thank God we got a man of God that walks with God. And those kids are saying, I don't want to be like Samuel. He walks with the Lord. He walks with the Lord. And, 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 and so it wasn't just on the outside. It was, it was on the inside too. And if we're going to think about this circle of influence God gives us, the reason why we're not influencing anybody on the outside is because it's not real on the inside. And if we're not careful, we can play church. We've got a lot of young Christians in here, but every one of these ones that have been saved three, four, five, six, seven years would be able to admit that sometimes we get cold and we're playing church. We're just coming because we're coming. And we're just, we're just putting on a show. I mean, God doesn't want that. God wants us to be faithful to build these altars. 
Maybe tonight you need to build a family altar at home and say, we're going to get to God at this altar. We're, we're, going, to, we're going to talk to the Lord here at this altar. And i got my own altar. Where is your place of study in your house? Where you read your Bible and get along with God? Where, where is your place for your kids to read their Bible and get along for God? You, you understand, you don't teach them young. They're not going to do it when they get old. We can think all this we want to, but it's not going to happen. They'll have a circle of influence one day, and all those people in that influential circle will be done with because our kids didn't learn to walk with God. Because it wasn't real at home for us, and we didn't build an altar. And so we've got to build an altar at home. Number four, we'll go. Verse 15 says, And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. Wow. Year after year after year after year, he judged them. Verse 16 says, and he went from year to year, faithful, accepted responsibility, consistent, walked and worshiped God all the days of his life. And what will your life story be? I worry about our kids. I worry about all our teenagers. We say all of them, every one of them. Every one of them almost at a crossroads in their life where it can just be good or bad. Every single one. Not because there's anything wrong. They're bad kids or nothing. I'm not. I believe they're inside. They all want to desire and serve the Lord. But I'm worried about the mamas of these teenagers and the daddies of these teenagers. I mean, I'm worried about our whole church, man. We we can we can mess up this thing and and be out all day and get a get a, a problem or 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 pastor says something or or somebody says something in the church or or this hat. I mean, listen. Why don't you just decide right now all the days of my life and pray every single day, God, don't let me fall. I pray almost every day, God, don't let me fall. <laughs> Don't, don't let me run off with anybody, Lord. Don't let me look. Don't let me even like anything I see in this world. Put a door before my mouth. A watchful my eyes. God, help me. Because I want to do it all the days of my life. And I want my kids to do it all the days of their life. And you know why I want to do it all the days of my life? Because God's given me a circle. And, and it may not, you may not understand this, but I'm going to tell you, I understand the magnitude if the man of God falls. Because we've seen lives destroyed all around this country from preachers who failed. That circle was wrecked. Because they just decided they weren't going to be faithful. And they decided they didn't have to be consistent. And they decided that they weren't going to worship and walk with God at home. And build altars at home. And number five, Samuel didn't give up on his circle. Hey, let me ask you, who's in your circle tonight? Might be a good thing to go home, get your piece of construction paper, and draw your big circle on there. Start writing in the names. Some of our circle influence be bigger than others. But really, who, who is it, man? Samuel did it all the days of his life. And this is big time stuff. I mean, honestly, not think about all four of these guys. Now, I remember when 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 Hayward didn't want to go to church. We sit and talk to him. He'd just happy and he wouldn't come to church. I remember sitting and talking to you uh, in, in her house that time. And hey, we got home from work. And Miss Monique coming to church. And and and, 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 and I remember talking to Lisa, you know, living her life. And, and Miss Dawn, and, uh, you know, worrying about her at times in her life. And not thinking that she's going to be able to do it. And decisions and all this stuff. Man, they did it. Yeah. And, and no one easy. And I'm not saying they're perfect. No way. I tell them all the time, I got video cameras for the Institute. I know what they do up there. But I'll tell you this. I mean, it's a degree in Bible, and they know more about the Bible than they knew before they started. A lot more. And they understand when Brother Burton gets up and starts picking a passage of Scripture out and says, oh yeah, yeah, remember this. Remember this. Hey, now God says, I gave you that, but that, that wouldn't just be a piece of paper that hung on your wall and you get excited about that piece of paper. Man, I've got that piece of paper. I don't even know where it's at. I mean, I got a ring and all that stuff, but you know, that's not the most important thing. Now, the most important thing is who's in my circle? And we got to remember that as a church, 
Lots of people were under our influence. Those bus kids, Lisa, those are in your circle. Brother Hayward, Miss Monique, Miss Dawn, all these, all these folks, all our neighbors, each other. What are we going to do with that circle? I'm just going to tell you, man, Samuel was faithful. He didn't mess around, and you have been given a circle. And what you do with it, you'll stand before the Lord one day. And God wants to know that you were faithful to it. He wants to be able to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And God cannot say well done if you don't do a job well done. I want to be able to say, well done. I've got a lot of licks and a lot of things against me as a Christian and being saved and things that I've missed and done and, and different things. But I'm hoping that God knew about that and I can get there and God say, well done, Bert. Well done. I know, you, I know you blew it a few times, but Bert, you kept getting back up. And that's what the Christian life is. Abraham, I've said this many times, Abraham, the friend of God. That's what the Bible says. Why well, can't be the friend of God when he tried to give his wife away to two men and say, tell them you're my sister so they, and, so they can have you and they'll let me go free? How could that be? Because he got up when he fell down and he got right with the Lord. He became the father of many nations. David, a man, uh, 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 a man after God's own heart. How did he be a man after God's own heart when he cheated and, 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 and killed a man and, and, and got prideful and his baby was killed and all this stuff and adultery and fornication I mean, all that craziness. How can it be a, a man after God's own heart? Because he got back up. And that's what the Christian life is. And you guys, as you graduate, man, you've got to keep getting back up. And you guys have got to keep getting back up. But we've got to get back into that circle. Now go home tonight and you ought to make that circle. Now start typing out a list. Who's in my circle? Who's in my circle? Who's in my circle? We ought to start praying. And we ought to start begging God to give us more influence with those folks. And what they need is not someone to come fit in with them. They need someone to come in and be a godly testimony in front of them so that they can get what you have one day. Because God can do that. My whole family wondered what happened to me and still do. And I'm just saying it's the way it is. And I can't be around a lot of them because the things they want to do and say and talk about. I just say, I'm not mad at you. It's fine, but we cannot be a part of that with my family. And that's not going to hurt them. They're going to eventually say, yeah, it's funny how the people that don't believe in God want to be around you as a Christian when times, when the bottom falls out, that's who they call you. Hey, uh, brother, uh, can you pray for me? And put this on your prayer list. Now, they'll come around one day. But you've got to be faithful to the circle of influence God gave. Let's pray. Maybe God spoke to you tonight. You can get to the altar in just a second.